Hello, Rick here on Certified Lean Game. So I just finished watching the first two episodes of Star Trek Discovery, as I imagine a lot of you have, uh, and I left it a couple of days, well, a day or two, mostly because it's out on Netflix a day later everywhere else, and also because I wanted to actually sort of put together a bit more of a coherent idea in my head as to what I thought of it. So this isn't as scripted as my usual stuff, it's just running off of a page of notes I was making while watching it. So let's get started. So my first impressions of it were that it felt very Kelvin timeline, um, not just for the like updated aesthetics and everything, but just generally the feel of the show. It felt more like a, a sci-fi blockbuster than it did like an episodic series, which is probably a reflection of the fact that it is going to be one long narrative. And I did end up finish watching it with this feeling of it being semi Star Trek. Let me explain. Um, at times, I was watching it, it was quite easy to forget I was watching something that has Star Trek in its name. Like, um, it felt like a, a science fiction show, just a fairly fairly good science fiction show, but it didn't feel Star Trek. And then occasionally you'd hear a background sound effects or something some of the characters would say that you could picture being a Starfleet thing or a Klingon thing to say, and then it would draw you back in a bit. But yeah, that that's basically my whole view of this series is that it, it I, I kind of liked it after watching it and everything like that it, to be fair it was quite predictable the plot most of it I did like initially looking back on it and the more I look at it the more I think this could have been its own thing it didn't have to be Star Trek I mean of course for CBS it had to be Star Trek it's just not Star Trek at least not as we know it it's life gym, but not as we know. This show seems very, very futuristic in terms of canon and technology. That's right out the window. Like I say, like all pretense is gone. Discovery can only be its own thing. I mean, they can call this the prime timeline now, and if they like, they can they can reinvent the whole universe to fit this thing because that's kind of what it needs. In order to make Discovery fit into the prime timeline, the entire Star Trek canon would have to be completely revamped. Of course this might sound nitpicky to people who aren't huge Star Trek fans, but a lot of the details, a lot of things in terms of technology and the look of the show, although updated, that's fine, update the look of it, but they didn't have holographic imaging technology or, you know, little things like that. At that time, at that level of communication, they didn't really do that. It was all still on view screens, and yes, you could argue that's because, well, that's because it was made in 19, like, in the 1960s and the 1980s and yes that's understandable you can update the look of the show that's fine I didn't have a problem with it like I say I actually quite liked how everything looked in terms of the science fiction and things like that I quite liked how it looked but it's not era appropriate to the story that Star Trek had made the original Star Trek that is but then again there were like some Trek things in it that I did like for example the Vulcans were pretty much spot on um, I liked Burnham's, because she was raised on Vulcan, I liked Burnham's mannerisms when she first is introduced to the ship. So you get a seven years flashback sort of thing, and you get to see what she was like fresh off of Vulcan, and she is acting very Vulcan, and I quite liked it, because it's like, that's very true. I can see what they mean when they say they touched, used um, Balance of Terror as like a touchstone, um, because there's this all this Cold War tension where you're not sure what the enemy's up to. That plays very much into the first two episodes neither side is entirely certain what the other one's up to but I didn't I didn't feel the tension that balance of terror created again I keep coming I keep coming back to this point you compare it to the original Star Trek universe you can only come to the conclusion that this doesn't really look like Star Trek at times you can close your eyes and it sounds like Star Trek perhaps it even at times almost feels like Star Trek but it, it's not not quite there I have to look at it as it's, again I keep saying this, I keep have looking at it as it's own thing. It's it's own thing, you've got the Kelvin timeline, you've got the Prime timeline, and now you've got this new Discovery Prime timeline. Um, okay, so the Klingons, I'm still not a huge fan of how they look. We get to see several different houses um, in terms of their look and stuff like that, and yeah, no, they, they all look pretty much like the images that we've seen. The armor is different, which is pretty cool, but as a species, this is kind of how they look now. This is, yeah, this is how it is. Um, still not a huge fan of that. 
Although the saving graces were that their culture seems to be pretty accurate. We are of course seeing a more religious devotion from the Klingons that we see as the antagonists of this episode. They are far more zealous than your standard Klingons that we see by like TOS and even TNG's time. And the fact that they speak Klingon as well is really appreciated like among their own kind. They're only speaking Klingon, which makes complete sense. You know, no like passive universal translators going on. No, they are just they are just speaking Klingon to each other because they are Klingon. Of course they are. Um, didn't quite think that they needed to like modulate the voice and all of them to make it deeper. That was a bit weird. But my point is, again, close your eyes, don't watch it, just listen to it. It sounds Klingon and even starts to feel like these are the Klingons. And then you open your eyes and suddenly it looks completely different. Now, a lot of their look can be explained by the fact that they're an ancient... Well, they're not an ancient sect, but they they seem to be emulating ancient Klingon culture, like in terms of the looks and the fact that they're still practicing mummification and things like that, which are all ancient Klingon things um, that we don't really see much by the time of TOS and TNG. The thought occurred to me that their redesign was perhaps done to make them seem even more alien and unpredictable as an enemy, whereas the... Uh, Klingons that obviously we see from Picard and, and Kirk, we're like, ah, oh, we know what they're going to do, we know what they're going to be like. These are a completely new redesign. You know, these, you have no idea, really, what they're going to do. I mean, you kind of do for the sake of the narrative and the fact that we've seen everything in trailers, the story unfolds pretty much as you'd expect. So, pretty much those are my, like, initial thoughts on parts of it. Um, my overall spoiler-free opinion of it is that I'm going to continue watching it, because of course I am. It's nice to have something Star Trek back on... The t well, it's not even back on TV, technically, is it? All right, so it's nice to have a Star Trek series airing again, but it is its own thing. It feels like its own thing. It doesn't feel like a continuation of... Well, it definitely doesn't feel like a continuation of TOS, and it doesn't feel like a continuation of any of the prime timeline stuff at all. Maybe Enterprise, at a stretch, if you looked at Enterprise on its own, but definitely not the original stuff. It doesn't feel like a redesign or a reboot of TOS either, of that sort of era of technology. Like the JJ verse sort of felt like an overhaul and a redesign. This doesn't even feel like this does feel like it's its own thing, which I guess you could argue is a good thing, because if you don't like it, you can always isolate it as its own. This is its own event. It's only one story, so it's only going to be one event effectively that you're going to have to isolate from the rest of Star Trek. So you could do that if you didn't like it. But at the same time, this isn't the Star Trek that diehard fans are still waiting for. This is just another new revamped Trek akin to Kelvin. In terms of the story and stuff like that, I think it's fairly solid. Nothing really happened in it that was unpredictable. I think that certain characters work well but I did feel like some points the conflict between the crew members in particular was a little forced for the sake of creating drama because they said they did say they were going to do that but I kind of look at it now like how have you functioned together on a ship for seven years and you haven't reached some sort of amiable thing you know <sighs> relationship by now but yeah, that's that's getting into spoilers stuff now, so I'll end it here. Basically, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll wrap it up. It's Star Trek, but not what we'd really hoped for, but kind of what we'd expected. It's not terrible. It's actually pretty solid. I like the look, I like the sound, I like all, everything about it. You just didn't need to... This could be its own thing. It didn't have to have Trek tacked onto it. And you could have... All of this could have been solved if this had been a post-Voyager series show. Like all the continuity issues, the advanced technology, it, it could have been post Voyager and things would have been fine. Right, so as this video is already well over the length that I planned, I'm going to end it here and save spoiler discussions for a separate video. So if that's the sort of thing you want to see, be sure to check back. It'll probably be out in a couple of days, probably, but before the next episode airs, otherwise there's no point. So thanks for watching. I've been Rick, and yeah, let me know what you guys thought as well. I'm off now to watch other people's opinions, Ketwowski, Law Reloaded, Track Yards, that sort of thing. So, I will see you next time. Until then, thanks for watching.
and goodbye.